Hello, I'm Guy Solos, Gentleman's Edge here in Denver, Colorado. I uh, own and service and sale, sell straight razors here in the Denver area. Uh, but today I'm going to do a video on chili contorta and how to make it. Okay. Now chili chili contorta has been in my family for quite a while, and it's a New Mexican dish. Uh, I remember as a young kid, my father, my grandfather eating it, and it smelled good, tasted good, and he just looked like he loved it. And I remember taking a bite of it and just burned my, my mouth. But you know what? The flavor was just out of this world. And so I'm dedicating this video to my grandfather, uh, who, by if if he didn't if he didn't have it uh, have that around, I probably would never taste it. And I probably wouldn't even have uh, been able to enjoy such a, a great and simple dish. Uh, I also want to dedicate this to my aunt uh, Adela, and there uh, she's also passed away. But um, without her, I never would have uh, known how to make this dish in such a simple and easy manner but uh, anyway uh, this is uh, this is the the red chili this is this is meet a soul chili meet a soul means looking at the Sun when you uh, see a uh, meet a soul chili plant the, 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 the plant the chili actually grows up towards the Sun uh, and that's why it's given such a name it's also very easy to identify from the other chilies uh, but it's got a very uh, robust flavor to it. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of hot, uh, at least it was in the old days. And uh, what I mean by that is, uh, back in the old days, chili was just kind of naturally grown. Uh, nowadays, uh, I was reading this article where it said that uh, a lot of the chili, if not all, the chili in New Mexico is now genetically modified chili. Uh, so that really angered a lot of people, but uh, and that may explain why this chili that I'm going to make today isn't near as hot as as what it was in the in the old days. So I'm going to be using uh, three serving spoons, uh, and everyone's got these three heaping uh, serving spoons full of the chili. I'm also going to be using uh, flour, and you have to gauge this because you're going to make a roux with this. And also, I'm going to use the uh, the flour to make the tortas, right? But this is just a whole grain uh, flour, which you can certainly use any any flour you want. I'm also going to be using whole garlic. There is a difference in flavor uh, from the whole garlic to the garlic you find in the little jars that's pickled or sitting in water. This has got just a night a much more authentic flavor to it, right? I'm also going to be using some uh, bacon fat to make my roux. You don't have to, but to me it gives a really nice flavor. It absorbs the flour and makes a really nice roux uh, and thickens well. Uh, but, uh, and you know, you shouldn't be really too concerned about the health issue because as much as I'm going to be using of this bacon fat, I'm also going to cut it with the, some olive oil. But, uh, you got to understand something, you know, you're you're only going to eat probably a quarter cup of this chili, if, if not less, right? So, other thing I'm going to be using is some salt. <clears throat> got uh, four eggs here. Three of them are going to go into making the tortas. Uh, and two are, I'm going to use for making my breakfast. It's like 1.30 here and I'm starving, right? And make sure you have a couple pans. This pan here, I'm going to put some canola, canola oil in. To, uh, to fry up the tortas. And this pan here uh, is a little bit larger than what I need, but I have four cups of water in here. And I'm going to add the chili and the roux, and I'm gonna have to you know, mix it up. But you want something a little bit deeper so you're not splashing around, okay? So, uh, other than that, um, I'm not going to use a whip today, a hand whisk today, like I like I usually do. I'm going to use uh, my wife's uh, beater, electric beater, uh, just because it, it, it's just simpler and more thorough. Uh, so, other than that, uh, I'm going to have uh, some tortillas. I'm going to make some refried beans. I'm going to put a little cheese on top, and maybe some some fresh onions. And hey, I'm ready to eat. I'm seriously starving, so. Come on, join me at the stove and let's uh, let's make me some breakfast, huh? Thanks. Okay, got my water boiling. I got my pan hot. We're getting ready to put my 
brew together. And uh, while I've been doing that, I separated three eggs. And in about uh, probably a tablespoon and a half of the bacon fat. And I kind of want it to heat up a little slow, so it's smoking a little bit right now. So I want it to heat up slow. So I'm going to. Uh, okay, so first thing I want to do is uh, add some, I'd say about a uh, teaspoon of, of salt to your water. Once again, it's four cups of water. So, turn on some light in here, huh? Alright, so. I got three big spoons, serving spoons of red chili. Just put that in there. Now, uh, one thing I'm going to do with this chili also is once all the flour is cooked out, and I'll explain more about that uh, in a minute, is I'll put it in the blender and just puree it so it's really smooth. And if you want it any smoother, you can probably run it through a sieve, but there's really no reason to. I mean, you know, you want it to look, you know, homemade. You don't want it to look like it's a canned item, right? So, all right, so I already got, uh, I got two large cloves uh, cut up, and I'm kind of thinking that's too much. Uh, in fact, I think it is, so I'm just going to kind of scale it back a little bit, right? So add that. I'm going to add three spoonfuls of the flour to start. Okay, everything you have to adjust, okay? Now, uh, I think it's important to know something about uh, when you're making chili. Um, see how I what's happening here is it got really clumped up like this right we don't want it. we want it to be creamy so I'm going to add some olive oil to it because we're on a health kick right uh, so I'm gonna add some olive oil anyway uh, I know I know that three tablespoons or three of these spoonfuls of this particular chili is going to uh, how it's going to be as far as heat goes by the time I'm done. I don't even need to mess around with it. But for people who are just learning how to make this, or uh, if I've sent you chili in the mail and you're not sure how hot it's going to be, uh, and you want, you know, you're going to want your wife to eat a little bit of it, right? Okay. So this is what you do: you get it cooking, and the more it reduces down the more intense the heat is going to be. Okay, so this is what you do. And when you have a roux here, you gotta keep stirring it. You can't just stop to talk like me, right? Uh, this is what you do, is you get it cooking down, and when that chili starts to break down a little bit, start tasting it, okay? And if the, uh, if it's gotten to a point where it's hot enough, and you've already added your, your roux, which is a thickener, and if your chili is still thin, then add you some cornstarch and it'll thicken up the chili so it doesn't reduce anymore. And then you have a nice, you know, nice chili that, uh, that everyone can eat. Hope I explained that right. Because that's, that's pretty important. Uh, I'm, almost, I'm almost compelled to, to, to say it again so that you can really understand what I'm saying, okay? All right, let me let me explain it one more time, okay? After you've added your roux and it thickens up as much as it's going to, I usually uh, I usually have a pretty thin uh, sauce by the time I'm done with that after I add my roux, and it's got to reduce down. The more it reduces down, the more hot it's going to get. The more intense the flavors are going to get too, okay? But if you find that after tasting it that it's hot enough and the sauce is still a little thin, add you some cornstarch and it'll thicken it up, take it off the fire and you got your finished product, right? That's not too hot. 
if you have any questions about that, just um, go ahead and ask me in the comments, and I'll and I'll, and I'll uh, try to explain it better. But that's that's how I that's how I do it. You know, because I'll tell you something. There is nothing worse than going through the trouble of making a chili and have it be way too hot. So, I don't know if you can see the color of that roux. That's about a medium roux, which means it's a medium in color. So what I'm actually doing is I'm cooking this flour. Now once I add it to the chili, uh, it's going to thicken it up, but you let it sit there and cook because you have to cook the flavor of the of the of the flour out of the chili. And don't be afraid to take your roux off the fire because you don't want it to cook too fast. Because you, if you burn your roux, throw it out and get a new one. Make a new one. I shouldn't have been using that noisy whisk, but uh, okay. Now my roux is getting pretty dark, right? Now, uh, I was going to be a chef at one time. I got. About two years into the chef apprenticeship program here in Denver, Colorado, called the Colorado Chef de Cuisine, and uh, I just couldn't stand it, man. You know, low pay, working with a bunch of pissed off people, um, but I learned a lot about cooking, and I also learned by me working there is killing my love of cooking. So, all right, so that roux is looking really super good. So, okay, my, my chili is breaking down really nice. So this is what I do. I get all the roux to one side and then I just pour it in and whisk it in. Now there's another way to make this without the fat. You don't get the flavor, but all you basically do is just brown some flour. But don't add it right directly to your hot uh, sauce like this, because you'll have little clumps of flour all over it. So what you want to do is get that powder. So it's just like I said, it's just it's just dry cooked flour, and you get it while it's cold and you just kind of mix it with some water and make a paste out of it and then you treat it like this see so also if you find that the chili isn't hot enough or isn't intense enough flavor you know you can add directly to it just add a little bit more water and let it cook and then uh, and then that's all you got to do it's real simple so all right this is what I'm going to do I'm going to let this just cook for about 15 minutes and uh, I'll be back and I'll show you how to make the tortas, huh? Alright, thank you. Okay, let's make some tortas. I have my red chili here just cooking, filling the entire kitchen with this great aroma. I'm just so hungry. I'm going to add a little bit of uh, baking powder to three egg yolks. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to use my big spoon, cook spoon. I'm going to add some flour. And I'm going to just kind of sprinkle it about kind of like this and then mix it in, fold it all up so it's nice. Now this I'm going to <clears throat> add to my eggs, egg whites. Uh, 
Another thing I need to add is a little bit of salt. So I kind of do that to it. Ooh, chili is smelling good. So, this is about three tablespoons. I don't add all of it because I want to gauge uh, what it's doing and that's what any cook will do. They don't just dump all the ingredients in and hope for the best. You kind of look at it and see if that's what you want, you know. So obviously it's getting extremely thick. So I just want to incorporate the flour into the egg by kind of pushing against the bowl with this spoon. So that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to use an electric mixer on my egg whites, so I'm going to spare you the noise, and I'm going to come back a little bit later, okay? All right, let me explain to you what I have going. This is my chili. I just got it out of the blender. And it's, it's kind of orange looking. See how it's not red looking? It's just irritating because you know, they, they leave all the seeds in there when they, when they these big corporations or farms or whatever. I've got this from Lulu's Farm here in Brighton, Colorado. They leave all the seeds in there. Uh, and when you when you use when you go to cook it and grind it up and everything, it turns the it turns a chili a more orange than anything. I guess that's good for the Bronco thing, but but the thing is they leave the seeds in there to make the chili hotter. And I don't that's one of the complaints I got is that chili just isn't hot enough because literally meat is sold chili you shouldn't have to leave very many seeds in there at all today over here i have my canola oil getting ready to cook my uh cook my uh, tortas in over here i got my pan for my over easy eggs okay now i don't know if that if that oil is hot enough but this is how you test it you get a little pinch of flour and just put a little bit in there see how it foams up like that I don't know if you saw it or not. Let me see if I can do it better so you can see it. See how it foams up like that? That means that oil is hot enough. Okay, that's that's pretty simple. To, so what I did is, this is a perfect example of how I tell you, you got to kind of cook and you got to adjust things as you go and watch instead of just dumping everything in and hoping for the best. This is the egg yolk with the flour and the salt and the baking powder and it was really super thick so what I did to temper it or to loosen it up I added some of the egg white in this small bowl and I just kind of did this to it so so that should be good there so I want to start I want to start making these tortas now um, and uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, where's my spatula and I'm going to just start adding some of this in. And once again, I don't know if I want it all in there or not. So I'm going to just kind of fold it in. Let me check my chili real quick. I can feel it dragging on the bottom, which means it's starting to scorch just a little bit, but it's only on the bottom. It's not going to affect the flavor at all. And uh, looks like it's going to be hot or thick enough. Now, let me show you something. <clears throat> the best way to uh, see if it's thick enough is to get a cook spoon like this. And you just kind of stick it in. And see how it's sticking to the back of the spoon? Now if you put your line like that in it, if that sauce does, does not run onto your line, it's thick enough. Okay, so... So that's what that is. So I'm going to leave that over here for a minute because I really, uh, actually I should add a little bit of liquid to it because I'm going to cook my tortillas in it for a while. And I mean just a eighth of a cup is all you need. But you want it to be hot. So. Alright, so uh, let me fold in my egg whites. <clears throat> Okay, in my first video that I did, I, I, I was just I just muffed up the torta part of it. I used uh, I didn't use the egg yolk. And I don't, I don't, the reason I'm making so many, besides the fact that they're delicious, 
is I already made a batch of red chili when I, I did a I did a film uh, on red chili just before this one a couple days ago so I have plenty of red chili but this is all mine you guys can't have it unless you make it all right so looking good Now there's a place here in Denver, uh, up on Federal, in about 55th, 56th, something like that, and he's got, he sells, you know, all sorts of chili, and this is where I bought this, this from, because uh, I was having, I, I really do, I don't understand certain things about what's going on, but... Uh, you know, I, I order seeds online or I get them from the nursery and, and just different things and, and they're just not growing right. They're not producing right. And when they do come up and they start producing chili, probably four plants out of 25 are a meat of salt, which is like really depressing. So I went to this place and he had some uh, meat of salt in a bag from Lulu's uh, farm here in, in uh, Brighton, like I was saying. And so I bought it, but it's not... It's not anything better than I grew, you know, but uh, even, you know, I guess the trick to growing chili is to make sure that you're uh, not overwatering the plants. Looking really good. Ooh, these tortas are going to be huge. All right, so let me get a tortilla out. So, anyway, tell you what, I'll be back when I get the entire dish together. So huh? it's all, all right. cooking now. The only way I could have done this better is if I had some steak or something marinating in my mm. chili, huh? All right, looks like I have a feast right in front of me. It's got the chili con torta, got some fresh refried beans with be with uh, cheese and onions uh, two over easy eggs and a nice uh, freshly heated up store-bought tortilla since I can't make tortillas they come out like like crackers but uh, I'll tell you what I don't need any meat with this actually this just the way this is is just wonderful uh, I don't know if anyone else out there has a dish that uh, they have a lot that brings them back in in time like this one does for me but just when you get this nice runny over easy egg and take a bite of this torta mmm man Wow, <clears throat> that's good. It's hot and it tickles the back of my throat a little bit, but it's not <clears throat> so hot where it makes me put my fork down. Mm. Mm. Now I'm gonna sit here and eat the rest of this. And I'm not going to get up and shut off the camera because I'm just too into this. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Wow. Mm -mm. Now, if I were to show you my kitchen, <clears throat> you'll see it's kind of messy from all the different pans and everything, but I'm just going to leave it there for Michelle to get home. Who will make me clean it up? Hmm. <laughs> nice. Very, very, very good. You can't buy this kind of food. <clears throat> I don't know if you can in New Mexico, but around Denver, you can't go anywhere and buy 
you know, chili that's like that. Nice cow's milk. <clears throat> yeah, believe me, I've tried. I've tried red chili all over the place. Mmm. Ah. Do I venture to say that there really is no better food than that red chili? Mmm. I remember sitting there, my grandfather, while he was eating this, and he'd tell all the kids to be quiet because he wanted to eat and he wanted to just enjoy his food. <clears throat> and it didn't take me long to start asking why. And I started tasting his food. It's like, you know, I would taste it off his plate, but I would taste the chili. You know, leftover chili in the pan. It's like, wow! Mmm. Very nice.